imaginary superiority, toxic waste. <coughs> hey guys! Welcome back! <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay. Lights, camera, action! Starting. I don't know. <laughs> this is good. I'm gonna put these snippets <laughs> in the video. No. Just like. I'm going to start this. <laughs> oh man! Hey guys! Hi! <laughs> okay, Chucky. Hey guys! Hi everyone! And welcome back for our take two of this video. So, firstly, I genuinely wanted to say thank, thank you to those of you who actually took the time to share your thoughts in a constructive manner. Uh, I genuinely appreciate those viewers who was, whose approach in pointing out some certain areas of concerns on our last video came without resorting to belittling or bluntly attacking. So honestly, it's refreshing to be able to engage in a respectful kind of dialogue with most of our viewers. So I just wanted to assure you guys that your perspectives haven't fallen on deaf ears. Now, while I still firmly stand by the content of the last video, I can definitely see how the delivery may have come across as abrasive or one-sided. And your suggestions to approach the topics in a more involving manner, including my wife, in a two-way conversation is certainly something that I've taken into account here. Hence the reason for redoing the video. So guys, rest assured that my wife and I make our life decisions together and with neither of us being elevated one above the other. Like we absolutely value each other's perspectives Correct. and we always consider each other's feelings. And thankfully, we even share practically identical worldviews. You know, we have the same moral values and even our spiritual and religious beliefs, they align to a T. I mean, you know, so we, we have the same foundations, I guess you could we say. We do, we do. Like, same values, same morals, and we just, like, in the same, same wavelength. Yeah, yeah, honestly, that's probably about as complex as it gets, and why does it need to be any more difficult than that? Now, however, unfortunately, in today's world, it's sadly common to see these internet warriors who like to act tough behind a screen. Uh, you know, throwing baseless attacks at others. And it's just something that happens all the time, unfortunately. And I think it's often driven by shallow mindedness. And these strong preconceived notions, probably stemming from places of trauma. Here's Johnny. Um, and they're quick to quick to judgment without any tangible evidence. You know, fabricating a narrative about someone's entire life from mere moments on a camera. And that that's what's most troubling to me because it clearly highlights their own unresolved issues, which are unfairly projected onto others. In, in a desperate attempt to maybe alleviate their own insecurities and failures. Um, I actually think there's a condition for that. It's like, 
I don't know, confirmation bias or something, but I'd have to look it up. Anyway, in saying that, I do apologize if the previous video gave people the impression that what I was saying was like a broad generalization, uh, all inclusive of every single human being born or living in the West. That's absolutely not the intent. The point I was trying to make is why we feel so strongly about challenging a particular kind of toxic Western mindset. And one more time, it stems from personal experience, like real life, right? Our enclosed private circle, not you guys, not at all. We are simply sharing with you our experience with this kind of <laughs> mentality and we really believe that it is the root cause of division between close family and friends and that it has the potential to lead to the collapse of relationships that should really be unbreakable. So guys, I want to emphasize that we're not here to point fingers or pass judgment. I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that these extreme reactions only serve to highlight the very issues that we're trying to address here. So. To our viewers who may have been affected by similar encounters or who are grappling with similar challenges in life around their circles, their workplaces, their friends, their family, look, just know that you're not alone. You're not alone. And to those who might be quick to judge or criticize others, I just encourage you to take a moment to reflect on the motivations behind your actions. And at the end of the day, look, I just want to believe that as a human species, as a human race, we can just aim to find a greater level of understanding and empathy towards each other. It shouldn't be that hard. It really shouldn't. So again, thanks to those of you who decided to take the respectful approach and I hope you appreciate this retake on our original video. Okay, so guys, what I've got here as requested, I've just thought of I don't know, eight or nine questions for Jan. That's a lot. They wanted two-sided. I'm giving him two-sided. I am not as eloquent as you. This is why. Well, practice makes perfect, right, honey? I mean, I was hopeless at this at the start. Go back and watch some of our videos. <laughs> they weren't great. So guys, essentially in this segment of the video, I've got a series of questions for Jan, uh, as requested. So without beating around the bush, I guess we'll get right back into them. Are you ready, honey? I think so. You think so? All I right. think so. Okay, so first question, honey, is how do you view the cultural differences between the West and the Philippines? So that can be anything. That can be to do with society in general, family, values, moral beliefs, spiritual beliefs, anything you can think of. There's the question and have at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, just Man, from your heart. I didn't even forget. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I'm dying. Let's do this. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> culture. A, yeah, culture. Yeah. Like what they value, what they believe in, what's the difference between the West and the and Philippines? Okay. The Western culture are shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, you heard it first here on the Castaway Couple. It's shit! <laughs> Let me try and don't interrupt me! Why do you keep slapping me? That's yeah. the difference between West and Filipino culture. Filipina slap! So, um... My personal view, this is just my personal view. I could be wrong because others or everyone has their own perspective. But this is just based on my observation and based on my experience. In the West, people have um, this direct way of communication with a little bit of lack of sensitivity, while us Filipinos I, I would use Filipinos because I'm not going to generalize it all the Asian countries. So Filipinos are more of like they prioritize respect and um, being gentle because they don't want to offend anybody else, anyone, to offend anyone. We value respect. We try to avoid conflict. And um, yeah, we, we use this uh, communication with gentleness just to just for respect and that's what's very shit and then okay so yeah. okay so and then on top of communication what what other things would you say that filipinos value over 
what we value here in the West? Like, how would you um, say some priorities? Families. Yeah, okay. So, in terms of families, Filipinos are more of like a close-knitted family. We um, take care of each other, help each other, even to our neighbors. While being in the West, I don't even know the neighbors here. I mean, I knew their names, but we never get to interact with each other. They're very busy and so we are. We are also busy. But no matter how busy we were in Philippines, we found time to just connect. Mm. Even like for a few minutes. Or even when you came back from work, or we see neighbors, we said hello. We said hello and that's it. And you know, that's There's a, a connection. Even if you, yeah. you're not family related. And that's what actually reminds me. I mean, what I noticed when we went to um, like Simangan, and all the uncles and aunties, like they live all within, like within the same suburb almost, or within a couple of suburbs of each other. You know, you don't have to travel far. So I guess, like you said, family doesn't seem to distance themselves too far away from each other. Whereas in the Western culture, it's common for have, you know, a kid living in Britain and an auntie living in, in Ireland. And then, you know, people all over Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, Perth, like, like you said, it's not that close they have, knit. Yeah, they're focusing on their own lives. Like, mm. I knew someone, a couple who has three kids. One lives in Sydney, one lives in Townsville, one lives in in UK. Yeah. The other kid from UK came to visit to her parents, stayed one night, left the next day. So it was like after so many years without showing up, came one night to visit and then left the next day. So it was more of like, um, Really, a family, but a family related by blood, but it feels like a stranger, like casual, and it's weird to me because yeah. I don't grow up the way they're acting to their parents. Yeah. So it's it's culturally different, and that's based on my observation only. That's actually really good. And what, what do you think is like the contributing factor to that? Like, why are we like that? I mean, what's the cause? What's the root cause of us being that way compared to you guys being so tight? What, what's that? Because everyone is, I believe everyone is busy um, progressing their life, like acquiring uh, success in terms of career, in terms of material possessions, and um, in terms of like, you know, uh, there is a competition like you have to excel in your career, financially, and um, lots of different stuff. There is like a competition, mm. like vivid competition. Okay, well said, honey. Um, question two, have you observed any instances where either Filipinas or Filipinos have been susceptible to this kind of Western toxic behavior and influence? discuss your mm, observations that's a good question I knew a couple they're all both doing well like two couples they're all both doing well and then wives are friends both of us and then um, they're friends but at the same time when one is absent in the group one is like backstabbing talking things behind the back and then they're silently competing each other's who has more, who has better. And I find it very strange because it's kind of a Western behavior. Silently, I think it is. I mean, I guess, would you say that that behavior is because they've come to the West and sort of been corrupted by the materialistic things that they know they can have? So that's why it elevates their competitiveness? I think so, <clears throat> yeah. Well, what about you? What about your take? Have you gotten competitive after coming here? It's not applicable to everybody. Well, um, I'm not sure because I'm, I feel like I'm the same from where I came from until six years later in, in here in Australia. I feel, I feel like I'm the same person. Mm. I, I don't really like, I don't really like stick my nose to anyone's um, life who has more, who has better. And I don't even brag. I don't even like showcase what we have or what they have. Mm. It's just <clears throat> to me, it's it's nonsense. So basically, what you're saying is, it's not everybody gets influenced, but 
the people that do, they seem to have adopted more strongly than if they had stayed back in Philippines and never known what it's like to be, let's quotation marks, wealthy. I think so. Maybe Which, they, some may have felt shocked and surprised and um, couldn't handle what they have and then just bursting out of of happiness, of, of being overwhelmed and wants to show the world, wants to... And then let it get to their head and then it became toxic. That's right. Which, I mean, can I make an observation? Even you never knew what branded cars were, you never knew anything like that. But as That's soon as right. we bought the Mercedes... That's funny. Things changed a little bit, like... <laughs> to me, a car is a car. It runs. It can go to different locations. It has wheels. It has steering wheel. I, I don't really care what brand it is. But then... But then he influenced me. He bought a Mercedes. I never get to drive such a nice car mm -hmm. until he bought one. So to me, it's like it's like a poison already in my thoughts because I find it like, okay, this car is better. The other one is not. Mm. Status. But. Which I'm guilty for myself. And that's why I'm, we're questioning all this because I've let it corrupt my heart too. Mm. And that's why I'm starting to navigate this path of where have I gone wrong? Where, where did I make the wrong turn? And you know, how do I backtrack myself to get back to a more neutral position? So that's what this is all about. Yeah, he made me feel so good about this brand, about this car. And then I feel like when I'm driving it, I feel like, oh, I'm so cool. Like, and, I'm so cool. And that's the influence <laughs> that I'm talking about. And that's what it is. And undeniably, I think a lot of people get that way and are that way when they see a BMW, a Mercedes, an Audi, you know, something a bit more prestigious. It's uh, already there's a stigma that surrounds it. And it's, you know. <sighs> but one thing is certain, I never brag it or I never posted anything on my no. social me media or, or say anything to my friends, my family. It's just. Mm. For myself, I feel like, oh, I'm so cool, like when I go out and drive around by myself. Mm. Okay, this could be a good one. In what ways do you think that living in Australia has shaped your perspectives and values? And have they changed more to suit the Western way of life? Or do you think it's actually pushed you to pursue a life more in the Philippine? lifestyle and moving back to the Philippines. So after living here, would you think Australia is actually the better place to live or has it solidified our decision to move to the Philippines? Mm, that's a very intriguing question because I'm, I believe like for me, it's me, myself, like the way I see it is that's really up to you. Like there are good things in Australia and good things in Philippines and there are also bad things in Philippines and bad things in Australia but uh, I feel more comfortable and more more of the sense of belongingness mm -hmm. in Philippines compared to uh, staying in Australia I mean it's nice here it's nice in Philippines but I feel like um, the sense of belongingness is in the Philippines the values I'm more aligned in my um, personal values and then um, the lifestyle more aligned in my the way I envision my life whereas here everything is nice nice car nice house everything is one click away compared to Philippines it's just like backwards you spend a lot of time chasing around to get things done mm. and um, there are advantages and disadvantages. It's just the sense of belongingness. I feel like my belongingness, I feel like my values are more aligned to where I came from rather than where I am at this stage of life. Yeah, they're not as present here. And it's funny when you talk about belonging, I actually feel the same way. I don't feel any belonging or sentimental connection to this country whatsoever. Um, which is that has to really be saying something because i feel a more sense of belonging and welcomeness in the philippines where i can't even speak the language with her family oh and that speaks a testament to how it really makes somebody feel um and if you hold no sentiment or connection to your own country and just see it as i'm just here 
to use it as a tool to set up the life I want. Like all it is, Australia is just a money pit that you want to come and mine the That's gold right. out of. And then, you know, there's, there's no love or, you know, even family, like we said, they don't stay connected. Nobody cares about each other. This place is just, it's a corporate office. It's and nothing else, true. in my view, in my view. Well, let me just um, reiterate <laughs> the word, is that correct? Yeah. Let correct. me just reiterate the word language. Of course, there's a language barrier. Although, yes, I'm speaking English, but this is not my native language. I'm doing very well, very well. That is why I'm not comfortable being filmed, because this is not my language. It's so hard! <laughs> 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 and and I truly feel like in Philippines it's it's easier. It's I mean I can speak and understand the language but not as like you know as eloquent as the way you present to the camera. And um, I am working, yes, I'm working in an office. I get to communicate people, staffs, but there's still like a language barrier Rambo. for me. I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's true that there is like a connection there. Even you said that you can speak the lang you cannot speak the language, but you felt the sense of belongingness. There Better. is a connection. Yeah. For example, like in the office, I work with multi-diversity culture, mm -hmm. like people from different countries. There is one Indian girl, Indian girl that I work with she lives in the Philippines for 12 years. She took her master degree in Philippines. We work together. She understands Filipino language, but she can't speak. And um, she's Indian, but she has the, um, the, the uh, characteristic of a Filipino um, person. Like we get along so well. We didn't take our job as like, it's, it's a job. We, go, we, we um, do it like, we do it um, with our heart, like we cooperate each other, we work harmoniously, we, t we joke sometimes, we laugh, we eat together, we go out, take a coffee together during break time. She is the only one that I feel like I'm in the Philippines or I felt the sense of connection, whereas the others is just pure cold. Mm. You're just here to make money, not friends. Yeah. All right. Now, probably our second last question, we'll try to wrap this up soon. Um, considering both countries' strengths and weaknesses, we've covered a fair bit so far, do you honestly believe that returning to the, to the Philippines is the best choice for our future? And if so, why? Mm. For me, it's going back to um, where I came from is the most amazing thing that could ever happen, living abroad, marrying a foreigner. Yes, <laughs> one who is so determined, so passionate to live the life where I came from Absolutely. is amazing. Mm. So um, I think he will adapt quickly uh, in the Philippines. I, 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 am, I have no doubt that he will adapt and he will be all right in the Philippines. I already drive like a maniac over yes. there, so I fit right in. Yes, <laughs> and all the, um, the uncles and the aunties. Yeah, I love them. We have, we mm. have fun together. Yeah. And so, so why? Why is it the better decision for us compared to living in Australia? I think what, it, what's the goal? It would give us a lot of um, freedom, sense of belongingness, connection, mm. and more quality time to each other. And the best part is having to live with a minimal bills, mm. not chasing the money to keep up the mortgage on a weekly basis. It's a lot of money on a weekly basis. Home prices are so high. All prices, everything prices. Everything. But still, why? Like, you know, like I think that they'd want to know why. Like we both have really good jobs. You know, yes. we're well above average pay. Well, well, well we, above. It's not like we're struggling. That's right. We're we, not struggling. We're but it, employed full time and both earning a decent <laughs> wage. And the um, reason why we want to change our lifestyle and be in the Philippines is to um, move away, break free from this um, superficial lifestyle in the West where you are like, you are judged or you are um, measured by how much or how wealthy you are or how successful you are. Mm, it defines your worth. 
to many people. I think that's the, the word, yes. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's just a never ending cycle like, yeah, fair enough, you know, we earn good enough money, we're, we're still young, we can pay the house off, but it's just the fact that, you know, you know, you got a 15, 20, 25 year mortgage. That's suffocating the thing. Yeah, it's just suffocating. It, it feels more like a death sentence in a prison and you just feel like a cog in the machine that just has to keep turning and you have owners. You're owned by everything. You're owned by the council, who you owe council rates to. You're owned by the bank, who you own your more owe your mortgage to. You you're owned by your employer who you need to be able to pay that bank who owns you to also pay your council rates and then because the owners of this country don't want that forget the politicians the politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice you don't you have no choice you have owners they own you it's a catch-22 because everyone seems to go yeah but if i if i work hard for the next 25 to 30 years i pay everything off i'll be able to enjoy my money and, and retire with a little bit what you know? strength do you have what if your health declines at the age of 70 after paying your mortgage well, not even 70 how many people now that we've known personally not going to name names so obviously Until 80 years old but 45 have gotten serious terminal diseases and just dropped off just dropped off you know where is the retirement plan in that case it feels like a marketing scam here in the west where it's like yeah but you'll enjoy it later just keep working for us just sacrifice the time and your health that you have now which is your true wealth your health and you know for something distant in the future and we guarantee it'll be there i mean superannuation companies really that do you think they want to pay How you out old? they'd rather keep your money you got to be 65 i think to before you can pull out pull it out yeah you can pull it out earlier but you have to pay a tax on it so you lose a fair chunk but you know to me it just the west is false marketing a false promise of something that 50 percent of us statistically will actually never reach the one in three australians have cancer or will have cancer by the time they're in their 50s then that's just one type of disease and you've got diabetes you've got leukemia you know you've got all these different diseases that play into that and it's like you know, it's very well that nothing might happen to us. We might live till 90. But if we don't, like, I just feel that we're going to get to that stage. And if it does happen, we'll regret that we've given up all this time for something that's virtually the construct of somebody who made up a monopoly system just to keep people entangled. Um, and that's my view on it. It just feels like a false marketing here in the West. We're going to put dangle a carrot in front of you way far out in the future and guarantee you'll get it where the reality is out of all the people watching this video, there's probably 30% of us that aren't going to get that luxury. Unfortunately, I hate to be a, you know, bummer on this video, but that's just the truth. And that could be us. And that's exactly why for us, I think this is just the way to go. It's just for us. It's the mm. way to go. This is our way of our being able choice. to, yeah. And it's our choice. That's it. Yeah. Simple. Yep. Well, in essence, guys, our intended message here is really just for you to stand your ground and follow your instincts. Like it's that age-old saying where nothing worth having ever comes easy, um, and it will always be met with resistance, uh, especially if it sets out to challenge what is considered normal or standard like people often prefer making excuses for their limitations instead of pursuing their dreams in fear of failure and admittedly look i'm even a prime example of that and i don't think anyone here would honestly even believe me if i said that i'm immune to the fear or the doubt because i feel it on many occasions by the way, um, and it just keeps playing out in a loop in my head. And I don't know what life in the Philippines will be like, the same as I didn't know what would happen when I decided to you know, defer going to uni and pursue my electrical apprenticeship, um, as I didn't know what life would be like when I married Jan, uh, or you know, when we had to close the company during COVID, or when we sold the house in Melbourne and moved to Queensland, and you know, let alone what's gonna happen tomorrow or even 20 years from now. But should I let that fear dictate our decisions? And should I also join the chorus of critics that tear down those who do choose to step outside of what's considered normal, uh, while at the same time secretly wishing that I could do the same thing? Um, and I found myself in that position. And it's just this perplexing double standard that I'm 
ultimately trying to wrap my head around uh, you know, the concept of both sides, the left and the right. But one thing I know for sure is I feel a strong pull towards moving to the Philippines as if it's really the right move for us and all the stars just seem to be aligning. Like everything seems to be just falling into place um, without us really having to push for it. So the point of this video is simply this, to awaken our close people, your close people, wake them up to this kind of prejudice is probably the best word I can think to describe it, um, that seems to exist between the left and right. And that when you do experience it, don't allow that stigma and people's narrow fields of view to impede on your confidence in what you are doing and what your dreams actually are. And to those of you who are quick to judge and ridicule and discredit uh, based on shallow presumptions, look, I just aim this at you in the hope that it can open your eyes to the bigger picture and at the end of the day, all anyone is really asking for is just a little more love and understanding. So look, I guess that's, that's pretty much it guys. Um, that'll wrap it up for today's video. Uh, we hope that you guys have enjoyed our take two for this video. And I hope we managed to present our thoughts and feelings in a more digestible manner this time around. Um, so guys, make sure to like and subscribe. You know, drop your comments in the comment section below. And um, look, take care out there, follow your dreams. This is the Castaway Couple. Signing off. See you next time.